like it's been a while, but we're going to move into a new series of lessons here, uh, going back to many months ago when we uh, surveyed you about topics that you would like to have us bring again from the Walking Christian series that we did, because at the time we did them, we offered two classes a night, and that didn't allow everybody, obviously you can't be in two places at one time. And there were some classes that were offered that were people were saying, boy, I wish I could have been in that class. Mm -hmm. So we, we promised back then that we would bring them back and everybody would have the opportunity to do so. So we picked the top five. I think this is the third one out of the five that we've gotten to. And so this one is on forgiveness. So we're talking mm -hmm. about walking Christian on forgiveness. Now the outline for these lessons comes from a lady by the name of Jean Hunt. Uh, she is a uh, Christian psychologist or uh, sociologist, and uh, I've gone through these lessons, and I've chewed the meat and spit out the bones, mm -hmm. and presenting to you what I think is some very good material that would help us uh, with this particular topic and subject, all right? The way that she usually does her uh, lessons, one that I really appreciate, is it kind of broken down in four steps. The first step is she deals with the definitions of the particular topic. And of course, all of her approach is from a biblical standpoint. Then she looks at the characteristics of that topic. So we're gonna first tonight begin looking at defining forgiveness. And I believe that's a really good place to start because what forgiveness means to Gina uh, may not mean forgiveness to Jerry. And that would be a really bad thing. That might cause people to do like this, right? Yeah. Bump, bump hair. So it's a good thing to define uh, our topics and to have the standard for our definition be the Bible. Amen? Amen. After we look at the definitions, then we're going to look at the characteristics of uh, forgiveness. And after we look at the characteristics of forgiveness, we're going to look at the causes of forgiveness. And then the last uh, part of the outline, and that last, last major part of the outline is dealing with the steps uh, in forgiveness. Now, it's been a goal of mine lately to come up with a, um, a book. <laughs> and I'm starting to get a lot of material, my sermons and the like. So I, I just didn't have the time. Uh, I knew the material. I knew what I want to present. I, I want to present to you tonight the whole little book of the of the class, and so you can fill in and fill out. But uh, with that being said, I do have the first portion that we have here. For those of you that are digitally inclined, you go to my website, and on the tab that says Bible Classes, you click on that, and this lesson will be there. So those of you that are watching in internet land, uh, you can go to BarryDJohnsonSenior.com for the Bible classes and click on the forgiveness, uh, whichever way you want, a PDF or in a Microsoft Word file, and you can follow along in, on your own outline because uh, what I have here is some uh, fill-in-the-blank portions of our lesson, okay? All right, so with that being said, we're going to be dealing with the definitions of forgiveness tonight to make sure that we are defining forgiveness uh, from a biblical standpoint. By a show of hands, how many people uh, know somebody or have dealt with somebody or still deal with somebody they don't like dealing with? <laughs> okay. Is there somebody that you know you just really can't stand and get under your nerves? Anybody ever had to deal with somebody like that? Or maybe you're dealing with somebody like that before? Anybody ever have enemies before? Anybody ever have enemies? I said, I'd like you to take a moment and, and think in your mind when I ask you this question. Uh, how many of us are okay with the idea of forgiving our enemies and then having them spend all eternity with us in heaven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah, sure. Because. Yeah. And some of the lessons that I listened to in, in being prepared for this, there was a lady that was challenged to forgive her enemies, and she, you know she was told, "Don't you want your, don't you want your enemy to go to heaven?" She's like, "I don't want him in heaven with me. <laughs> 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 Can't get along down here on earth." Mm -hmm. 
but uh, how are we going to get along here in heaven? So that, that's one of the things that we need to keep in mind. You know, the ultimate goal and Jesus' ultimate goal, God's ultimate goal is that none should perish, right? right. Mm -hmm. Like all should come to repentance and be able to gain everlasting life and to go to heaven. Forgiveness is one of those topics that has something and can play a role in that happening in the lives of people, okay? Uh, so let's, let's look at some of these definitions here. Let's start off by first dealing with the many different faces uh, of forgiveness, all right? And I want to start off by looking at Luke chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. Because there the Bible says, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, do what? Yeah. Forgive him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you uh, seven, times. seven times in a day and turns to you seven times, now that's seven times in a day. Right? Isn't that something? Yeah. Seven times in a day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent. The Bible says you must. kind of have this idea that if somebody doesn't mean it, then we don't have to forgive them. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we're going to deal with why Why would the Bible say something like that when somebody is constantly doing things, sinning against you, and, and need to repent, ask for your forgiveness, and the Bible is telling us to forgive. How, how are we going to be able to reconcile that? How are we going to be able to understand forgiveness so that we can fulfill uh, this passage here. All right. So we're going to start off by first dealing with the idea of what is forgiveness, because we, if we define what is forgiveness, maybe that passage will be a little more doable in our understanding. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let me see. If it, this doesn't look like it's printed right. All right. So what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is the first one. There is dismissing a debt. Right? Forgiveness is dismissing a debt. The Bible says in Luke 6 and verse 27, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, and do good to those who what? Hate you. Hate you. Okay? So one of the things that forgiveness is, is dismissing a debt. Forgiveness is also, this is going to be a little long here, is dismissing your demand that others owe you something. Sometimes, don't, have, have you ever felt like somebody owed you an apology? <laughs> that they owed your, uh, for them to beg you for forgiveness? So, forgiveness is dismissing your demand. You understand that? This is your demand that others owe you something. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's dismissing a debt, and it's also dismissing your demand that others owe you something. Matthew 5 and verse 39 says this, uh, But I say to you, do not resist the one who is what? Evil. Evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him also. Yeah. Others also. Okay. So we have to learn how to dismiss the idea that somebody owes us something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Once again, this one didn't look like it came out either, just the line, so let's do this. So forgiveness is also dismissing, canceling, or setting someone free from the consequence of falling short of God's standard. Okay? Dismissing Canceling or setting someone free from the consequence of falling short of God's standard. Because God has standards for how people should treat one another, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people need forgiveness because they don't meet that standard. Well, forgiveness is dismissing, canceling, or setting someone free for not meeting that standard. Particularly where you are concerned. I mean, obviously we have enemies because our enemies are not treating us the way God desires for them to treat us, right? At least 
Hopefully that's what it is. Hopefully we're not the one causing people to be enemies. All right, so if they're not meeting the st- what God's standard is for how I'm supposed to be treated, then forgiveness is dismissing, canceling, or setting that person free from not meeting that standard. Now, I'm going to say something now that I want you to meditate on, contemplate, challenge yourself, even challenge me in, in, being, in, in saying this. And, and I've, you know, been fond lately saying uh, what's missing in the world today. The number one thing I think is missing in the world today is self-control, right? Mm-hmm. Self-control. If the world had more self-control, it, it would be a better place. I think there's also, um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying this right, if this is something the world is missing, but I think we have lost the, the idea of the power of absorbing an offense. Mm-hmm. I think we that the world has come to a point now to where we feel every offense has to be settled. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That every, if somebody does me wrong, then we've got to figure this out. Mm-hmm. And it's got to come to a conclusion. Now you also know what I'm very fond of saying. There are some things that you're not happy with some things that have happened in your life and in your lifetime that are not going to get resolved and you're going to take them where? You're going to take them to the grave. Mm -hmm. And I really, really believe that because it's in the grave, it's in our death, it's in our uh, everlasting life where God is going to wipe every tear. Mm -hmm. Right? God is going to make everything all right. Not us. We're not going to make everything all right before we die. God's going to make everything all right in the long run. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some things for us to deal with, and there's some things for God to deal with. And we have lost the idea of the power of absorbing an offense. Mm-hmm. It's funny on my job. I'm the foreman now, and I'm the boss over these 15 guys. And the littlest argument. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm sure Dan has been through this when it's a job. Here. The littlest thing can go on for weeks. Mm-hmm. All right? And sometimes you can see it happening when somebody says something and you know the other person doesn't agree with it, they can't let it go. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They got to oh, say yeah. something. <laughs> you, you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We've lost the idea of the power of absorbing an offense. Turn it over to God. But because we believe that if we don't say something, we're what? We're weak. We're weak. Or they're gonna they're gonna do what? Right on. Yeah. Take advantage of us. And I'm not going to let that happen. Right? We stand in the place of God. I am going to take care of myself. And if we've lost this ability to allow God to take care of us because we've allowed the world to define what weakness is and what weakness is not. Mm -hmm. And in that, we've lost in translation this ability to absorb an offense. Some people you you can make mad just by absorbing an offense. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because they're saying something to you sometimes just to get you mad. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Yes. And so, if we don't say something, have you ever tried that before? (laughs) I've tried that. (laughs) And they just get just as mad, you know, because you're not defending yourself or you're not, you know, uh, participating in the argument or whatever the case may be. Now, there's a time and a place for everything, all right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not saying that you you do this every time. I'm saying, you know, we got to be wise. And we've got to be intelligent and have wisdom and be able to apply that in our lives. And sometimes that calls for us absorbing an offense. Jesus absorbed an offense. Paul absorbed an offense. I mean, he didn't have to get chased from town to town. He could have snapped his fingers, and like Tony said, they'd have been greasy wet spots. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't have, Jesus didn't have to take nothing. No, he did not. But he absorbed that offense. 
Because absorbing an offense allows forgiveness to still happen. And even more important, it allows something else to happen that we're going to see come out from my definition. Glenn, you had your... Yeah, I think I think it's in scripture it says a wise man overlooks an insult. That's right. And uh, I had an example the other day. Um, there was this guy who purposely made a jab at me, saying that I, I wasn't doing something Christian like. And I was like, and I just didn't say anything. I just overlooked it. And now the guy realizes I'm not trying to pick a fight. And just because I overlooked it, right. he was just wanting to get a re- gauge a reaction out of me, saying that like you're not a good Christian. And I was like, well, I'm gonna overlook that and okay. keep on moving <laughs> on. You know? That's what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's a very powerful way to exemplify the one who saved us. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's his ways that we're trying to reflect, right? Yes. Not our own, I hope. Exactly. We're not trying to re- reflect my thoughts and my wishes in this life. We're trying to reflect his thoughts and his wishes, his way of living, his way of dealing with people, his way of dealing with his enemies, his way of dealing with friends, right? That's what we're trying to reflect. Mm-hmm. But we've, we've allowed the world to bait us out of reflecting the glory of God's living in this world. Because mm-hmm. we don't want to be considered weak or foolish or whatever other names we can be called. But yes, yeah, I was going to say, uh, in this forgiveness, uh, it, does it, it tests our patience. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because Sometimes you want to you want to step away and think about your response mm-hmm. and your action, your mm-hmm. reaction to what is done. Right. But s- sometimes it's unavoidable <laughs> that you have to. Sometimes it's tough, right? It's very tough. There's that struggle that I always talk about. Mm-hmm. We all in this lifetime, we're always going to struggle, always mm-hmm. wrestle with that, mm-hmm. because the Bible's pretty clear that you know part of the fruit of the spirit is. Patience. So we got to have it in a measure greater than just ourselves. It's not the fruit of bearing. It's not the fruit of my flesh. It's not the fruit of my experiences. It's the fruit of the spirit, right? So, so there, pay, there's a measure of patience available to me greater than my human capacity <laughs> to give it. And we have to learn to yield ourselves to that. Yield ourselves to that which God can help us with, patience. <laughs> okay? Dan. That, when we first started out, I had a question. You, you brought up there about forgiveness seven times seven. Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of times people, they don't, they don't ask for forgiveness. Nope. We got it's got to come from us yep. as a Christian. Mm-hmm. That's the different way of looking at this because uh, a lot of them just say, "Hey, that's it. Screw you. I mean, that I, I told you this that if you can't live with it, too bad. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not asking I did anything wrong. Right. And you know they did wrong. Yeah. So that comes to us, you know, as a Christian, you're mm-hmm. going to have to handle it in our way right. like for mm-hmm. forgiveness. We still got to forgive. Absolutely, and that's that's what we got to work with because right. people don't do what what they should do. No, not all the time, anyway. Mm-hmm. And there's not one of us that can't say that we haven't received His forgiveness, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right. And if, if He can forgive us, then we can forgive others. Mm-hmm. We and have to. We might even say that. Well, you know, they didn't do to Jesus what they did to me. <laughs> no, they've done. They, you've done worse. Yeah. You know, we've done worse. We put Jesus on that cross. But you couldn't drink that cup. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Glenn, um, in the definition of what love is, um, it says that uh, love never quits. Right. That's right. So that's what we have to do. We never have to quit. We always have to be forgiving. We're the ones that keep going. Other people, they're the ones that set boundaries. They, they're the ones that put up walls and say, I'm it done with you. also says love doesn't oh, keep a record of what? Of wrongs. Wrong. Oh, right. <laughs> right. But, boy, we can do it. And we can pull them out at a moment's notice. <laughs> Fifteen years later. 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 F
So we have to learn to be able to forgive people, set them free from the consequences of not meeting God's standard, not, not our standard. Because we know what the penalty for sin is, right? Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is, it, it is death. And we are supposed to bring a world, the, a word into the world and a way of living into the world that will hopefully be able to help people to escape the wages of sin. Well, one easy way of doing that is to forgive, to set them free from not meeting those consequences. Okay? I mean, didn't Jesus say that too? Uh, who did he say it to? Was it the woman that the woman that caught the caught in adultery? Yeah. Where he said, you know, where are your uh, accusers? And then he told her to go away because I don't accuse you either. <laughs> he set her free. Right? And then he warned her not she to did. sin again, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's always the case now. God doesn't, God is not complacent where sin is concerned. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we placate sin. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to overcome it. And forgiveness is a way, has a way of doing that. Okay? So in Acts 10 and 43, mm -hmm. the Bible says, To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives what? Forgiveness of sins through his name. But not meeting God's standards is sin, right? And so we free people from that, that sin of not meeting God's standards where the treatment of us is concerned, to where we might have an ought with our brother, okay? All right, let's keep looking at some, so let me ask a question here. Is it possible to sin beyond God's ability to forgive. No. 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 Yes. But uh, <laughs> in, in one sin that the Bible said uh, that will not be forgiven, that's sin against the Holy Spirit. Yeah, grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to understand we have to understand what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's that's just not accepting God's word or his way or walking the way that he does. That's right. grieving the Holy Spirit. That's that, you know, I don't want you. And and God has given man that choice. He's given us volition mm -hmm. to where we can choose that. So we can choose not to be saved. Mm -hmm. All right. So in that sense, if if we're thinking that way, you know, that's acceptable. Of course. In, in that sense. But is there any act that we can commit that God can't forgive? No. No. Ooh, that's that, that might be a good one too. That's a, yeah, that's a tough one. I sure wouldn't you try to figure it out. But God. And, then he <laughs> and then he didn't ask for forgiveness and he could kill himself before he was forgiven. Yeah. Absolutely. That's something that'd be really I think terrible. we think of suicide backwards though where forgiveness is concerned. Because mm -hmm. that forgiveness suicide is not something it's not like spur of the moment. Although it might seem that way. It's that's what's in your heart. No, no, no. It, it's an illness, yes. It, it, it can be a mental illness. Right. That's something that's something that's in your heart. So those are two very stark comparisons that are certainly in the gray areas there. But you know, me myself, I don't know about you. I don't plan on committing suicide anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I don't plan on grieving the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yeah. Right? And you certainly can't help anybody <coughs> to be of assistance. To anyone that is going to commit suicide, mm -hmm. and we can certainly do our best to reflect God's glory in this world to help people not to grieve the Holy Spirit, you know. But as, as far as you are concerned, <laughs> all right. So, was it, I had another hand up though. Yeah, Graham. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, the key thing in there is God's ability to forgive. God yes. has the ability to forgive that's, anyone that's for excellent. anything, mm -hmm. whether He chooses to or not. And this is good that we're defining forgiveness because there's an aspect to forgiveness that I think we're equating with forgiveness that really isn't. Okay, we're we're going to deal with that in a minute. Okay, because you can, like you just said, you can forgive, you can extend forgiveness, but is is that just because you extend it, is that person forgiven? When Jesus died on the cross, was that sacrifice offered to the world? Yes. Yeah. 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 
But is the world going to be saved? No. Nobody no. will going to be saved. Okay, so there is there is a part of forgiveness that we equate with it that isn't always equated with it. And I, I'm just trying to hold on to, to get that later. But so God, so the answer here is no. Is, is it possible to sin beyond God's ability to forgive? No. God promises to purify us from all unrighteousness, not just specific sins. But we need to first confess our sins. Confess means literally to agree, to agree with God. And if we agree with God about our sin, we not only admit we have sinned, but we also turn from our sins and turn to Jesus, entrusting our lives to the one who died for our sin. And I like what Greg's comment adding on to that. God has the ability to forgive the person who commits suicide. He has the ability. The question is, will he? <laughs> is the person who commits suicide going to be forgiven? It is certainly not beyond God's ability. Because he can, if he says you're forgiven, you're forgiven. I mean, he said, let there be light and darkness. And mm -hmm. there was light. So whatever God says goes. Jesus told the thief on the cross, you know, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Guess where he was at? Paradise. <laughs> Jesus said, God says it, it happens. So it's not beyond his ability. There are some things that men can do that would draw that into question, but it's certainly not past his ability. Okay? somebody's hanging and they're dying in their dying are they saying oh I wish I didn't do this yeah. I'm sorry God you know but they, they didn't have the ability to pull themselves out of it mm -hmm. so so the minutia has nothing to do with God's ability to forgive yeah, okay. and that's what we're talking about here mm -hmm. okay and, and this is this is what happens in the world see we, we strain out the net <laughs> and we swallow the camel mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's stick with the idea, can God forgive whomever he wants to? Yes. yes. Does he have the ability? That's the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could come up with some horrific sins, mm -hmm. right? Can God forgive any horrific sin we can think of? Yeah, yeah he yeah. can. <laughs> you know, but will he is the question. Mm -hmm. Let's always um, make discussions, debates, and, and the like to the power of God not to our ability to reason it out. Okay? God can forgive. Bottom line. Marco? I think you hit it on the head. It's, it's always makes me really worry when anyone discusses the minutia, like it's some kind of mathematical equation, because it, it assumes that we have all the information of what's going in the other person's head and simplifies a very complex situation. You never know what's going to I am so confident that there will be no mistakes in heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm not so confident that there won't be mistakes among people here in their reasoning. I know that. They, they don't put people in heaven, so I, that's, that's not part of my equation. <laughs> I, I, I trust in the one who died for my sins. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am confident there will be no mistakes there. And men need to gain that same confidence as well. All right, so I was talking about we attack some things with forgiveness that uh, maybe uh, aren't also included. So let's, let's look at that idea. We're gonna, let's talk about what forgiveness is not, okay? To help narrow and clarify this, this definition of forgiveness, okay? And so the first one is, I <coughs> went in uh, backwards here, but Proverbs 1 and 5 to start this off with is let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. All right, so let's let's do that. Where trying to learn what forgiveness is not. So one of the things that forgiveness is not is circumventing God's justice. Right. 
we, just, just because we're forgiven doesn't mean that we have circumvented God's justice. Now, how many here, under the sound of my voice, and even on the internet, raise your hands if you can uh, identify, how many of us here have sinned? <laughs> okay. All right. So if we go to heaven, did we circumvent God's justice? No. No. Because the wages of sin is death, right? So, and hopefully this will help us understand something here. So, my going to heaven did not disappoint God's justice. Because I'm a sinner, but I'm going to heaven. Somebody in heaven might say, that's not just. How did Greg get in here? The biggest sinner I know. What is he doing up here? Right? How did you escape the... That's because a sacrifice was offered to appease God's justice. So we did not circumvent God's justice. There was a sacrifice given for our sin. Now we all know who that was, right? That was Jesus. That was Jesus. So we are able to go to heaven even though we have sinned because not circumventing God's justice, but meeting God's justice through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. That's how powerful that death, burial, and resurrection is. Okay? so But that's not what forgiveness is. So we can't be thinking that either. That if we have an ought with our brother, we don't want to forgive them because it ain't right. What they did wasn't right. <laughs> they need to pay for what they said. <laughs> you don't talk to me like that. Well, our forgiveness doesn't mean that they escape God's justice. And boy, if, if we had enough faith just to let people have to deal with God's justice and not ours, mm -hmm. man, <laughs> that's some powerful stuff. That's all right. I'm not going to deal with you. I'm going to let my God deal with you. <laughs> now, I used to have that kind of backwards in my head many, many years ago. I used to think, when my, you know, when I forgave somebody, the only thing I could picture, I think I told y'all this before, was coals of fire, burning coals. <laughs> and I would just have so much satisfaction for that. I was like, oh, I forgive you. <laughs> and then the coals would be on the <laughs> Oh, they get me. <laughs> okay. But I, I think God wanted us to empathize with that picture mm -hmm. and not be satisfied with that picture. I, I think he wanted us to wanted us to know that you need to you need to move in a different direction. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen to this person. And, and when we understand just how terrible hell is going to be, just how terrible a life without God, a life without hope can be, then we would do something else mm -hmm. to take the satisfaction of the destruction of our enemies. Jesus, I mean. God is not willing that any should perish. <laughs> he, he's not satisfied at the destruction of others. All right, so forgiveness is not circumventing God's justice. It is allowing God to execute his justice in his time and in his way. You see, what we have in mind for those that we have ought against does not match what God has in mind for those that we have a problem with. You understand that? All right, another one. What is forgiveness stop? Forgiveness is not waiting for time to heal all wounds. We've said something like that before, right? And I know why we said it. I've said it too. I'm just not ready to forgive. It still hurts. I'm still mad. I need a day to think about it. That day turns into two days, and then that day turns it's a week, and then we don't see that person for a while. And now we're starting to operate under the guise of two people that don't get along and are mad at each other. I think that happened with um, Jacob and Esau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jacob was scared of his brother. Mm -hmm. For good reason. <laughs> for good reason. And how many people did he send before him trying to appease his brother? No, no, you go, you go. <laughs> take my kids. Take these gifts. Take these cattle. 
take this, you know, lay the carpet out for him. And what did Esau do when he finally saw his brother? Ran hugged him. Hugged him. Hugged him. Hugged him. Ran One of the him. most beautiful stories in the Bible. Isn't it? And so obviously Esau had gotten over it. <laughs> <laughs> so forgiveness is not waiting for time to heal or wound. It is clear that time doesn't heal wounds. Mm -hmm. What heals wounds, say? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus heals wounds. God heals wounds. Okay? Time has very little to do with it. Time passes, <laughs> but it doesn't heal. Right? Yeah. What happens is we forget. <laughs> Other things become more important. We start prioritizing our hurts. Right? You know, have you ever had that where, you know, we all have, I believe we all have like a top 10 most wanted list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and that list changes with time. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody could be number one with a bullet mm -hmm. for a while. But then, you keep it up, Jerry. You're moving up. You're <laughs> 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 <from> number three. <laughs> and, and then you know somebody else comes down, and we have somebody else there. So, so once again, making the discussion and the argument and the understanding toward the power mm -hmm. of God. Time doesn't heal wounds, and so we and we've got to have that understanding that if if we use that excuse, we're not allowing God to do for us what time could never do. God can wipe away all tears, the Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. God can mend broken hearts. Mm -hmm. God, God's the one that can do that. Now, I could preach on this one for uh -huh. oof. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Nothing but God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Did time pass? Yes, but time didn't heal me. Mm -hmm. It was God. Right? And so the time didn't. Yeah. You need to address your aggressor and go. Yeah, I think and it's always. Been mad, you've been mad at somebody for a year and you Absolutely. try to contact that person to have a discussion. They won't do it. Can you just take prayer, forgive them, and yep. move yeah. on with your life and yeah. let it go? And if they choose to hold it against you, nobody you has the power to keep you. Mm -hmm. from forgiving them. Nobody has that power. You can always forgive. We can always forgive. Okay? And if there's time it's appropriate to do it in person, and there's time to do it when you're not in person. Sometimes you may not be able to do it. Let me tell you one thing. Some of us need to forgive people that have left this world. Now, you'll never be able to... <laughs> to do that, right? I mean, we're, there are just cases upon cases uh, of, of people who had just rough childhoods and the like, and parents had passed away, and, and they still need to forgive their parents for how they treated them. So nobody, no one has the ability to keep you, keep us from forgiving someone, dead or alive. And, and, and the forgiveness is, is more of a detriment to us mm -hmm. than it is the offender. Mm -hmm. There's a demonstration that's done of a, uh, something similar to a meat hook put on your shoulder. And on that meat hook is a sack. And for every offense that you hold on to, you put the equivalent of some sort of size rock in that sack. <laughs> And every time you have another fence, you put another rock in there. And another rock. Now just imagine yourself walking around with those offenses. Mm -hmm. And that, that hook is just eating into your skin. And, and the weight of that thing is starting to deform you. you you're, you're walking like this and you're trying, you, you, you make other efforts to gain relief from the offenses that you carry. Instead of just taking that person off the hook, taking that offense away, let, let God handle that. Mm -hmm. 
We don't want that kind of time, do we? Time with those offenses on our shoulders like that, weighing us down, Gary. Oh yeah, I just, I mean, I, I, I know I've hurt people, like still angry at people that have passed. You know, That's it's, right. it's like, it's like, <laughs> right? What are you doing to yourself? That 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 poisons us. You know, you know, sin liter sin literally is the reason why we die. So when we hold on to it, it's, it's poison. Bitterness, malice, and things like that cause us to have deformed, you know, presence. <laughs> All right, so, so some more on the what forgiveness is not. These are really, really good. All right. Forgiveness is not letting the guilty off the hook. <laughs> Once again, we're putting ourselves in the place of God. I am letting you off the hook. We, God's the one that will alter that, that justification is needed for, for us. Ultimately, it is the it is moving the guilty from your hook to God's hook. We're not letting them off the hook. We're putting them on God's hook. <laughs> we're taking them off of our hook. We're putting them on God's hook. They got to deal with God now. But as far as I'm concerned, me and you, I, I forgive you. Marco. Okay, you mentioned like you suddenly with the bad old days when you would heap fiery coals on somebody. So yeah. what's, what's very interesting about this is that the offense when fresh hurts quite a bit. And then all you can think about is it's like when you hit your hand, that's all you can think about. Fresh pain takes precedence. Now what happens is the more you have time and the more consideration you have with other person's circumstance, the more you learn about the other person's circumstance. When they're causing pain to you, they're evil, they're horrible, they need to be punished, they need to be hurt. Over time, the pain will lessen, and you get you get to know the other person more, their circumstances more. Maybe they're a drug addict, maybe they have a horrible situation, maybe they lost their job. You begin to empathize with that person a lot more, and suddenly it's less become, I want to hurt this person, it's more, I can understand this, and that, that can it empathize happen, a lot more. But that is not... That is generally not the rule. I the see the this reason identity. why people don't forgive, like say, loved dead ones or something like that, or relatives in the case be like that. What we generally do is we like our pain. We get used to a certain it, it, situation. It's beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. It makes us feel good about ourselves. It allows me to put myself over the other person. Yes. We, we prioritize it. I can forgive this, but I can't forgive that. There's more. Yeah, we'll hold on to it. Because we think that, we think that, like I said, it's that trump card you want to keep in your hand to play at the right particular time. <laughs> We're waiting for the right time to play it. And we think that once we play it, then we'll be done with it. You know, it's out of our hand, it goes back in the deck, da 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 da. No, that's not how that works. Glenn? That's exactly what I was going to say was um, that uh, keeping the record of wrongs is like you can't get the person off the hook if you keep reminding yourself of all the ways they offended you. Yeah. It's like always remembering every little thing they've done wrong right. and you keep them you keep them evil in your own mind. You don't put that stuff away and just say, you know what, I'm going to start fresh with this person and uh, maybe in the future I'm going to discuss it, but you know, start fresh. It's what allows us to say, yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's that type of attitude. All right, now this next one is huge. So please, let's pay attention to this because this is the thing that I think we often equate with forgiveness, and it really isn't. All right, so forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Forgiveness is not the same thing as reconciliation. So you can forgive somebody and not be reconciled to them. Matter of fact, where, it, where a Christian is concerned, it is always better for us to forgive. <coughs> With, and I'm not, I'm, I want to say it so it's appropriate. It, we should always forgive, but we should understand that that doesn't mean that we're reconciled. Yes, sir. So you don't agree with them. That's right. 
you know, agree with or, or reconcile. It takes two to reconcile. It only takes one to forgive. So Jesus died on the cross. He offered his, his life as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. One can do that. But it takes two to be reconciled. If you're going to be saved, you just can't receive the offer of forgiveness. You've got to be reconciled mm -hmm. to God if you're going to be saved. A restored relationship requires reconciliation. To, to, to dismiss a debt only requires forgiveness. Do we understand the difference? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you can, you can dismiss a debt, but it doesn't mean that you are reconciled. It doesn't mean that the relationship has been restored. Other things have to happen for reconciliation to happen. And where God is concerned, he's told us what is required to be reconciled. We have to hear his word. We have to believe that word. We have to confess him before men. We have to repent. We got to be baptized, and we got to remain faithful. When we do that, we are reconciled to God. Okay, so forgiveness is not reconciliation, and one of the ways to remember that is it takes two for reconciliation. It only takes one for forgiveness. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, that will help some of us to get some of these people off the hook <laughs> and put them on God's hook, right? Gina? Um, is that also, I don't know, um, like say you forgive somebody but they're really not living the kind of life like that you want to be around. You don't have to reconcile, even though you forgave them, that means you don't have to hang out with them. Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's Absolutely that's right. That's good to know. That's easier. <laughs> yeah. 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 That should make it easier. Absolutely. And, and don't let other people put that on you. Know, oh, I thought you forgave me. <laughs> I did forgive you. But I'm not participating in that foolishness. <laughs> right? right? That's not what it Forgiveness is also not excusing unjust behavior. This goes right along with what Jesus, what Jesus is saying here. It is acknowledging that unjust behavior is without excuse while still forgiving. That can happen. Any sins that, that Jesus forgave that doesn't mean he agreed with them. Mm -hmm. He just forgave them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to be reconciled, you want to receive, you want that forgiveness to be fully effective. Because that's why we want forgiveness. We want, that, we want forgiveness to be fully effective. We want forgiveness to alleviate the guilt. We want forgiveness to put us back in good standing. We want forgiveness to uh, just wipe out everything, and that's more reconciliation's job than just forgiveness' job. Forgiveness is what benefits us. Reconciliation benefits the relationship. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness means you don't have to be bitter anymore. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean forgiveness means you don't carry the weight no more. Forgiveness means it's not going to cause you to act so outside of the character of Christ that's in you. Reconciliation restores our relationships, reconciles relationships, puts them back together again. Forgiveness does not do that automatically. Mm -hmm. It's a stepping stone. Good step. It's a good start. It is worth it. But it mm -hmm. is not the complete, it's not a, a completion of the picture. Mm -hmm. Right? Reconciliation is not forgiveness, and it is not excusing bad behavior. Forgiveness is also not explaining away the hurt. Forgiveness is actually a part of the process of working through the hurt. Forgiveness is more than just words. <laughs> <laughs> it can be tough for us to, to live and walk with it. It, mm -hmm. it really is. But 
is beneficial for us. It's it's working through the hurt. Forgiveness is not explaining away the hurt. It is working through the hurt. Forgiveness is not based on what is fair. Hmm. That's another thing that's big in the world today. We want what's fair. Everything. You know, if you if, if, if you get one, I gotta get one. <laughs> <laughs> if you get two, I gotta get two. <laughs> There are some people that will check what you got uh -huh. <laughs> to know if they got enough. Uh -huh. Right? Well, Greg got three. I'm like, why I only got two? He's <laughs> bigger than you are. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know three what, though? <laughs> So we fair, it was not fair for Jesus to hang on the cross. Absolutely. But he did so that we could be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness is, is not about what's fair. Because that's isn't don't we use that as an excuse for not forgiving sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not fair. You, you know what she did? You talk to your kids. Your kids. Your kids say some of the most um, intelligent things if you were just listening sometimes. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to forget them. But don't you want, don't, it, then we all teach our children to get along. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they ultimately do argue, right? Mm -hmm. And they fight. And then we make them make up. Mm -hmm. We make them forgive each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. And even though we made them forgive each other, reconciliation still hadn't happened yet. But the world is not in them like it's in us mm -hmm. because they're still young and not hardened by everything yet. Mm -hmm. So reconciliation comes much easier for a child oh, yeah. than it does for an adult. Yeah. A child can forgive and move right on into reconciliation. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be mad and fight, mine, 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 mm -hmm. and fight about it. And the next thing you know, we, we make them make up and they're playing again. Mm -hmm. And the offense is long forgotten. They're not even thinking about that no more. We're, but us, we're, we're a totally different story. <laughs> we're a totally different story. So it's, forgiveness is not based on what is fair. Dan. Brother Jack, uh, people forgive, but they don't, they, you're talking about for, forgiving, but they don't forget. For, you know, they, they still they forgive and still have it in the back of their head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know what that's what you're saying about this coming together with this, because it takes to really do it right. It has to be done uh, in, a, in a manner coming together with two people. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it, you you can forgive anybody. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything Absolutely. until you make it work. That's the reconciliation mm -hmm. part. The, Exactly. That's part of us saying. defining what forgiveness is here, right. so that we can do that, so we can get rid of those, the, those, those weights that we've been carrying around that are causing us to act outside of our character, right? Because we're making compensation for the hurt that we have been carrying around. When we, when we could have long time ago displaced that hurt. You know, that's not fair because of what, you know, she did or what he did to me. You know, it's not fair that they get away with that because we think that if we forgive them, they're getting away with something, right? Mm -hmm. If we forgive them, we're excusing bad behavior. If we forgive them, that's not fair. And that, that's why we're talking about this. Because that's not what forgiveness is, right? We talked about this one earlier, too. Forgiveness is not being a weak martyr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm probably takes more strength to forgive <laughs> than not to forgive. Once again, our ultimate example is serving Jesus. Forgiveness is being strong enough to be Christ-like. If, if, if you knew couple hours, soldiers were going to come in here and grab you and put a 
crown of thorn, thorns on your head and nail your flesh to a tree and hang you up for all to see. If you knew that was going to happen, <coughs> would you stay in this building and wait for the army to come? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that what, isn't that what Jesus did? Yeah. Yeah. That's strength to me. That's strong to be able to do that. Now we know what he went through. <laughs> Doesn't dismiss that it wasn't difficult, but he was strong enough to do it. And even after it happened, he was strong enough to continue through it. So it's not being so the world wants to tell us we're weak, but that's not that's the world's definition. That's not God's definition of us. When we step up to the image of his son. And do likewise. Mm -hmm. Forgive others. Mm -hmm. Right? Forgiveness is also not stuffing your anger. Mm. <coughs> it's not taking it and shoving it and putting it away, locking it up in a box and never to visit it again. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is, it is resolving your anger by releasing the offense to God. It's, it's resolution. It's not uh, putting it away, <laughs> storing it away for a, a better time or just storing it away, period. It's, it's release. And, and, and releasing it in a particular direction, releasing it to God. We know God can handle that. Nothing too difficult for God. Mm -hmm. I have not had a hurt that wasn't too difficult for God to deal with. Not one. So I, I and we have to trust in that. Forgiveness also is not a natural response. You hear me talk about this all the time, right? We have a firstborn nature. Mm -hmm. And we our tendency, particularly those of us this side of 21, <laughs> I, we can probably lower that number, this side of 14. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is not, but yeah, right, 12. What are you doing? It? it is not our natural response to forgive. Mm -hmm. Our natural tendency is, is for justice, mm -hmm. is for fairness, yeah. is for me too. You got three, I get three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? right? So it is, so for, so, so check this out, because I like, I like the way this is put. So if forgiveness is not a natural response, guess what forgiveness is? It's a supernatural response. Okay? And it is empowered by God. We're acting God like, Christ like when we forgive. When we do it properly. That's why I said there's power in absorbing an offense. Something the world doesn't want to do anymore. Don't have to come have a better comeback <laughs> or, or plan our next step. Mm -hmm. They did this, you just wait till you see what I do. <laughs> see only once. You know, you uh, only once you want to use three fights, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not gonna even do the counting game. We just gonna stick with <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna let that go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna give that to God. I'm not carrying that around. Okay. So I like that. Forgiveness is a supernatural response. It is not a natural response. Mm -hmm. And even I'll say, I, what you said, Brother Nancy, a spiritual response mm -hmm. is what it is. Forgiveness is not denying the hurt. We got some really good stuff here. It is healing the hurt. It is okay to feel the hurt. Mm -hmm. People do things to hurt you. It's okay to feel the hurt, but then releasing it. We're not denying the hurt. We're, we're feeling the hurt. We're dealing with it. We're, we're, the, the hurt happened. God does not require that we act like we, we didn't get hurt. Jesus didn't act like <laughs> he didn't get hurt. So, but we are relieved. Is that clock right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we passed time. Nobody said nothing. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop right there. Got, we still got some more good ones mm -hmm. to define. We're going to take our time with, uh, <coughs> with the definitions. Any questions or...
Comments on that? Pretty good so far? Dan? Don't you think uh, by uh, holding stuff in like this, uh, if you are a person that has the, the problem mm -hmm. not forgiving, that builds on, just like you said about uh, yeah. the way you illustrated, it does make people sick. Yeah. It, 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 will, it does. It, it will bring you down. It will bring you down further than you want to be. It will shorten your life. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Bitterness will shorten your life. <laughs> so it is to our benefit to learn how to forgive as God forgives.